Welcome to this video on the use of variables in MySQL. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video I'm going to show you some quite useful tools. At first it won't seem like it, but it gets a little more interesting the further on we go. First of all, I'm going to select the database which I'm using, and then I'm going to go to the SQL tab. And here I'm going to enter the first command. This command allows us to set a variable called v1. The at sign in front of it shows that it's a variable. We then have colon equals, and then we can do a sum. Now, if I run that, what I get is that it's worked, but it doesn't show me the result of the sum. So how do we get it to show the result? Well, that's quite easy. We do it in exactly the same way as we show the results of all queries. We use a SELECT statement. So now I'm going to go back to the SQL and put in the SELECT statement as well. Because we've got two statements in the query box, it will do both of them. And as you can see, it now says that the result of that is 14. If you have a problem with 14 and think it's 20, do have a look at the precedence of the signs in all programming languages. So let's try something a little more interesting. Here we've set up a host of variables. We've set up v2 to have the values that we had before, but this time we've combined the variables. So you can create some quite complex formulae. Let me show you that working. If I scroll up now, you can see that we've got the same answer as we had before, 14. Now let's do something a little more interesting. Here we're going to create a variable called today. The at sign in front of it means it's a variable format, and we're going to get today's date. So it's going to take some information from a set variable that it has called now, and it's going to output the result as year hyphen month hyphen day. That way we get the date in exactly the same format as the way that MySQL uses dates. Again, we're using select to output the result. Now, when we do this, we get the result that we'd expect, today's date. But that date is being used here in just an output format with select. However, we could use that in a query. So we could say select items from sales where date equals at today. And then we've got something a little more useful. Now, the final thing I'd like to show you in this video is something that really is very useful. In fact, it's absolutely compulsory and is the reason that I'm making this video. Imagine that we want to input the details of a new book. So we've got title and book, and into title we're going to put publisher ID and title. The publisher ID I'm assuming is 6, and the title of the book is SQL for Geniuses. So the sort of thing that you would pick up. But what I need in the book table is the title ID. And for that I have to be able to get the last ID field that was entered. In other words, the one for the title that I've just created. So I've created a variable called at TID, short for at title ID, that is the last insert ID. MySQL and all DBMSs keep a record of the last ID field they've created. In this case, it will keep the title ID because we're doing that first. And then as you can see here, we insert into Bookshop title ID, purchase ID, edition and price, but I can use that variable at TID as the title ID in the book table. So now I've got my primary and foreign keys linked correctly. Let's just see that working. It, it says it's done it, but do we believe it? Well, I'm going to go to the title table and I'm going to go to the very last records. And here you'll see 
that there is a line now that says SQL for geniuses. You may notice that the title ID, 432, one after the one you'd expect. That's because I was making sure that this worked before I did it in the video. And I can do exactly the same sort of thing for book. I can check out that it's worked in book and that that title ID, 432, has appeared in there. And yes, it has. We've got 432 here, exactly as we expected. And that's the power of the variables. We can take the last insert ID from an insert that we've created and use that as a foreign key in a different table. Thank you for watching.